Hello everybody, how are y'all? I'm just going to be making a card for a swap and it's a um, swap for a Facebook group that I'm in and it's called On the Farm Greeting Card. What I've done is I have embossed my card base and I used this Darcy wood grain embossing folder. And then I cut some pieces of grass out of these grass dies and they're all let me show them to you they're different so I'm just gonna see what it looks like because you know in real in real life no grass is the same color uh, well at least not in, out in farmland anyway <laughs> Of a, and home probably there is in subdivisions and stuff because everybody wants to get the same home. Then I went ahead and cut out. Oh, I trimmed my nails this morning so there's little nubs and getting hard to pick up. But here's these three little clouds, and this is from a die set which I unfortunately I don't have the name of, and I don't even remember where I got these from. But they're just little three uh, three uh, shapes of clouds. So what I'm going to do first, and let me turn this around, is I'm going to go ahead and use my Distress Inks. And I'm going to color the background. I'm using Vintage Photo, Antique Linen, and Walnut, walnut Stain. Okay. I'm using my little makeup brushes. These are the mermaid colors. Oop, I hope this is. Well, it is really, really, really light. This is the uh, antique linen. And let me leave that off so y'all can see that. And I'm just going to start off with that all over. I always like to do it in layers with the lightest first and then add the dark, the darker colors just to give myself a more of a real wood barn look for the front here of this card base. These brushes I really do enjoy using them. And as you can see, I don't know if you could tell, but it really doesn't, sometimes it really doesn't matter. And I am using this Nina 80 pound cardstock as my card base. But I'm not getting any uh, 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 sp uh, blotches or spotches like I used to get with my uh, sponge daubers or my felt. I just never could get the hang of it. Whenever I was using my either the sponge one or the felt tips, and as you can see, I had was well, I've been using them for years, but I just never could get a good smooth finish like all these other people you see on YouTube or Facebook or on these other swaps when you see they post their pictures and you see them because I always got like blotches, and then I got these brushes about a month ago, maybe two months ago and they have really made a difference for me. I don't know what it is about them, but so far I've been very, very pleased and glad of the purchase that I spent. I think they were like, uh, I got them on a pre-sale order from a fellow YouTuber, Jen Evers from Quality Crafts. Check her out. She does awesome job. She does all kinds of mediums. But check out her page. She's on YouTube. And she also sells craft items. Brand new craft items. And also uh, slightly used items. At great prices. Anyway. So this. I think I'm okay. And I'm good to go with this color. Because I can always add a little bit more. And I don't need to do so much because I am going to be watercoloring the card front, but I just wanted something for the background. And I think I'm going to make this smaller because 
I want to see more of that wood grain. So, close that one up. And then all you do is get a wet, any clean cloth, and I just use a microfiber towel. And as you can see, all the ink is gone. Now I'm going to go to my next color, but I am going to pat this just in case. I'm not for sure how dark this is going to be, and I'm going to try it. And you see how those are the little plots there? I didn't pat it down, and that's one of the reasons I've seen a bunch of videos is why they do that. Is they pat it down. See? That way you don't get the little blotches like I did there. So now I'm just going to try to smooth it out. But it's not that big of a deal for a barn door because in real life there's barn doors are not perfect. And they have their age spots. Their wear and tear. So I'm not too far off but I don't want to get it too splotchy. I just kind of want to sli slightly color this background card just to give myself some color. And see where I have another splotchy spot but I'm going in a circular motion and it's coming out. It's still kind of there but in here it's not splotching because you tell I wiped, patted it on another piece of paper, and look, there's no splotches on it. So that's a lesson learned. I just got to remember to keep this up. And I always ink my sponge, tap it, and then go to your surf work area and color. Because look at that, so much better. Better than those little splotches there. But, you know, we all have to learn. We have to learn how to use it. And that's the only way to learn is trial and error. I'm lucky that the card front's going to cover most of this. Okay. A little bit more here because I want to get color all the way around it. See, I almost forgot to stamp off to the side so I wouldn't get my splash marks. And I'm just using um, scratch uh, copy paper. I'm pretty frugal with my stuff, so the more stuff I'm frugal on other things, the more crafts I can buy. So I save my uh, scrap copy paper when I've printed something and I don't use the entire page because it makes perfect for this thing. Because once I'm due today, after this project, I'm just going to throw this scratch paper away. And I'm not going to spend too much time in the center because I know it's going to be covered up. But it's kind of a shame that that's going to be covered up. But you will be able to see it on the other side. And I just might color the other side. And see that? I just noticed I didn't dab. And here's a little darky spot again. So go back. And remember, look at that. See? There's no dark splotches there. I just did it. I just did it again. Oh, this is a hard lesson. <laughs> Look okay. Nah. But it's in the center where it's going to be covered. Okay. I think that's okay with that one. Let me clean this off. Double check it. No ink transfer. Start off with my darker color. And this one is Walnut Stain. So let me ink that up, blotch it over, and let's see. Yep, there you go. See? No blotches. Yep, I can definitely understand why everybody is dabbing it on the side because it does make a difference. And I'm just going to go sporadic here. Not going in, in any certain motion or any certain look. I just kind of want to make it to look like it's an oval antique barn. And get more of the look and the feel of it. I'm not too worried about the inside because, again, that's going to be covered up with my card front. So I'm not too worried about that. 
but I am getting a... See, there it again. There's a splotch. I didn't tap my spun my uh, excuse me my makeup brush. I didn't blot it first. Okay, I think that's going to be a good enough. Because I just wanted the several layer, two, three layer look. That's really all, all I was going for. So I'm going to put those to the side. Clean off my brush. And look, totally clean. It's got a look, it's stained a little bit, but that's okay. There you go. See, there's a little bit of a stain there. But there you go. See, there's no more color. You just wipe it off on any kind of towel. I'm just using microfiber just because that's just what I have in hand. Okay. Now, I am going to, let's see. I really do want more of that. So I think I'm going to trim this piece of cardstock. Probably like a fourth of an inch is what I'm going to go down and trim it. Just oh, I didn't hold it all that straight. Nope, it's not. I guess I'm gonna go a little bit smaller than I wanted to, but oh well. And, you know, things happen, and that's just you work with what you got. Throw these away. And, oh yeah, that's a lot better. You can see more of the actual wood. kind of would like to have that, but I need to do some stamping. Okay. So I'm going to set this to the side. Let me get my watercolors out. I didn't get my little, I'm doing my little critters here. These is, um, this one doesn't have a name on it either. This is a set of little balloons, but here is a uh, panda, a kitty cat, rabbit, and a little pig. But I'm going to use the cat and the piggy, because this is a farm thing, and stamp on there, and then I'm going to watercolor those. And I think I'm going to just stamp it with, uh, oh, I forget the name. Okay, there's, okay, there's a little pig. Because I'm going to turn this into a birthday card. So we'll do some little birthday balloons. My first time using this stamp these stamps. Oh, and I do have to get my little string. And... Since I'm making this into a birthday card, I'm going to use this sentiment here. It's called, Wishing You the Best Birthday Ever. We'll use that sentiment. This also comes with, it's party time, have a great day, may all your birthday wishes come true, sending you hugs and kisses on your birthday, make a wish, I don't have a cake or anything, I always, personally I just like to make a wish whenever there's a cake. Let yourself go and see how far you can rise, that's a cute one, but I think since I'm going to do a birthday card, I'm just going to go ahead and stick with these, because this is not a really big card front. Now what I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them on the top and they'll get their little string to hang and then we'll get the message. We'll put it on top. So let me get my Stamparatus just to be on the safe side. My 
keep my little stamparatus in the little bag that I purchased with it. Just to make it easy, because I do go to several cops a month. And it just makes my life a lot easier to have it all together and compact. And what I did is, I would just I made this out of the Stampin' Up! A sheet that they give you. And I just laminated it. This is the foam pad that comes with it to use with your cling stamps. And if you're using the red rubber, then you take this off and you don't use it. And this is magnetic here. See, you hear that? It's magnetic. And then I, I like this for the simple fact that if I get out of the sequence or if I ink out, I don't get my stamp, my foam pad dirty. So that's just me. And then let me set this here. Let me get my magnets. I did add some washi because these mag magnets are hard. But you do have to be very careful because they will break on you. So let me line this up. I do like to line them up just so I know where they're at. And let me do my little that piggy here. I think I'll do that one down here on the bottom. That was the yeah. That was a little piggy. Here's the little kitty cat, because I've got to do farm animals. We'll have them kind of facing each other with the little messes. And here's their string. I'll just have to do that one separately. I'll have to do that one separately. And then here's the message. Wishing you a happy birthday. We'll put that okay I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do that on top after I've stamped this out so let me put those together and I forget when you're doing watercolor what ink are you allowed to use Because I travel to crops, I keep all my inks. This is all my different variety color inks, and this other bin here is for just strictly my distress only, and that's it. Nothing goes in there but distress inks. But what I've done is with a black sharpie, like on your stays on, I wrote on there. This is good for watercolor, vellum, or acetate or metal. So this is what I will use to do that, and then for like memento. Here's your Memento ink. This is good for uh, using for alcohol markers. And then here's VersaFine. And that's good for embossing and it's also waterproof. But I'm going to use my, you know, I'm going to use the VersaFine. I like that. Stays on. You can only use Stays On Cleaner to clean Stays On, which I do have right here. So Stays On Cleaner. But it says VersaFine is, is for good for embossing and it's waterproof. So this should not run. But VersaFine, personally for me, I like it whenever I'm doing any lettering. And since I'm going to be doing that lettering over there, I'm just going to use that ink. So, I'm going to ink it up. Oh no, made a big mess. Let me get my wipes here. up my best before I do anything else because I don't want a mess here okay but you know hey it happens it's part of crafting I'll leave my pad there uh oh didn't work there let's do this again That's one of the good thing about the Stamparatus or a stamping tool is if it doesn't look like it didn't want to go, you can redo it again. And I want that to be a little bit crisper, so I'm going to do this again. So let me just ink that up. You don't have to put a whole lot of pressure on there, especially with these cling stamps. 
because you don't want it to get mushy. So you don't want to put a whole lot of pressure. But see, that's a big difference. So I like that a lot better. Okay, and I'm just going to do a clean little wipe, quick little swipe. And I usually just wipe it clean with a wipey. And when I'm done for that project, then I take it to my scrubbing scrubber. And I clean my scrub, my, uh, I clean, excuse me, I clean my stamps afterwards if they're really dirty. But these turned out pretty good, so I don't really don't think I need to do it again. But I'll always just use my cleaner, my ink cleaner, and clean them out. So now I'm going to line this up. Bear with me. I hope my head's not in the way. And I want them to go down toward that message. So put that there. Let's move this guy over. And I just moved it. But thank goodness my grid marks are right here. So I know where it is. And yep, I moved it. But because you have a stamping tool, it lines right up. So you don't have to worry about that. And there we go. Pick that up. Stamp it. Oh, I was off just a tad. But you know what? An easy fix on that is just get yourself a black Sharpie or any black ink pen, but a Sharpie type, and just finish the line. Oh, well, I'll never know. See? Oops, what am I doing? Now, let me do this one. And I I do want it to go up a little bit since I noticed that it didn't line up before. There we go. Ink that up. Push down. I used to count one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> that's kind of that's how I know I've got enough pressure. Okay, no, I'm putting that away. I don't need to do my message. Okay. Now, let's do the message. Wishing you the best birthday ever. And... God, that's pretty much centered. That looks good. Oh, that turned out really good, but I want a little bit crisper look, so I'm going to do it one more time. So I'm going to ink my stamp up my ink up my stamp. Already much better. Very pleased. Now I'm done with my ink pad. Off it goes. I'm going to go back in my move this away. Put it away. Clean off my stamp. And I'm just using a wipey. And it's cleaned off. Good to go. I'll clean it later. This is now finished. Close up my stamp apparatus. Put the magnet back in its holster. And I'll put it away a little bit later. Oh, there's a little magnet, but I'll put that away. I'll put it with my stamp. That way I know where it is and I'll put it away later after I'm through with this video. Now here are what I'm using is these Meaden 42 watercolor set. I'm brand new to watercolor. I haven't watercolored since high school and I graduated in 1979 if that tells you something. Uh, but I've dabbled here and there but nothing major. But I want to get back into watercolor. So 
we're gonna do the little pink and this is watercolor already on here and this is kind of a sponge I'm not really sure what you do with this but it comes with a water barrel you put it loaded with water but I got myself a little container of water I'm good to go with that and it stores here when you're traveling but this makes a great travel kit if you're gonna be out and about traveling or like for me when I go to my crops this would be good for me to just to take this and that'll be my watercolors. I also have these Prismo Market, the, the, these Prismo water barrel pens, and they come in two different sizes, at least when they were selling it. I've cut it off a website for somebody, I forget who. And they come in two different point tips, and you just load the barrel. I like it because you can put the top on here, you don't lose your top. And you just squeeze the water and stuff. So let's go to start with the little picky. We're gonna make the little picky pink and I want to start off with my sample just to see what shade of pink that is. Okay. So I'm definitely gonna to want to do that. And from what I was told this is like your palette plate. Okay, let's see if this runs. I hope it doesn't. And I am using this mixed media paper. It's called mixed media paper, vellum surface, acid free, heavyweight for finished artwork, wet or dry mediums. Since I'm new, I didn't want to invest in too much expensive watercolor paper. Not until I figure if I like this and I want to get the hang of it and when I do some more watercoloring and I can just invest in a better quality and bigger stacks of watercolor paper. But from what I've read and seen on YouTube, I have heard that the better quality of watercolor paper and the inks, the better results you have with your watercoloring. Personally, for me, using markers and um, I guess watercolors too, for me, all this little tedious stuff is very relaxing and it releases my stress from the day. I do work part time and I've uh, been an insurance agent for 34 years. Love it, love to do it, but I'm ready to totally retire. But as my hubby says, you honey, you can retire right now if you want to, but the crafting supplies is going to get chopped. And I'll go, ooh, I'm not ready to do that. Because <laughs> sadly, I don't shop for clothes, I don't shop for shoes, and I love shoes. Shoes used to be my one of my weakest things, is I couldn't stand not buying the latest shoes. And sandals were more of my thing, because I'm only five foot. So, I didn't really like to buy a whole lot of shoes with heels. I just never got the hang of walking on them. I did when I was in my 20s, but now I'm in my late 50s. And it's like, nah, been there, done that, don't want to do it again. And so, uh, I tend to now spend money on our grandchildren. Or now we have a great-grand. His name is Rowan. He's almost eight months. He actually, he is eight months old. No, seven months old. Sorry, seven months old. But they live in another state, so we don't get to see them very often. But we're lucky enough to be able to send them a care package every so often. And then just a, they get surprised at what we send them. Let me get some more pink. And finish this off for the little ear. Oh, I almost forgot the little tail. In real life, I don't think pink pigs have little pink hoofs, but I want to make it as realistic as possible. But I also want to make it cute, so 
I may go back in with a different color but I do like the darker pink but I do know that their snout is not pink 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 let's see if I have I'm gonna try I don't want to contaminate my white I'm going to put some white here on the palette, and then I'm going to mix in with a little bit of the pink and just soften it. And let's see what we get here for the nose. Oh yeah, do like that a lot better, because that's a little snout. And let me get my paper towel. I'm going to blot that just a little bit. See? When you blot it just a little bit, it takes a lot of that color off. Clean my brush out. And let's back up. Let's give a little bit more pink on the snap so it's not such a big difference. And then let's clean up our little hoofs. I don't know why I'm calling her a girl. Don't really know if she's a girl or not. And then let's smooth these out. I see some white splotches where the paint, the ink is drying. I do have my ceiling fan going in here. Just to kind of speed up the drying process. Oh yeah. Definitely like that a lot better. And that ink is not smearing, so it's just like it said, it is watercolor proof, so this Versify is good for that. Squeeze the barrel, get myself a little bit more pink. don't really need a whole lot more, but I definitely want to make it more of an even tone look. I don't want it to look like it was watercolored. And I definitely want the little tail to be more pink. Oh yeah, I definitely like this darker shade pink a little bit better. But there's some excess water there. Let me soak that up. There we go. If you just get your tissue and you put it to a point and then you use the very tip of the tissue or the paper, that paper napkin to get in the, just barely touch the water spout. And that's what soaks up the water without smearing too much or soaking too much of the color up. Okay, definitely like that. So I'm going to do the same thing. Soak up a little bit of that water. This is something that I learned when I was in art school. I took a couple of courses in college. Sadly, I never finished. Didn't get my degree. Decided to fall in love and get married. <laughs> Which I'm very happy I did do. I have a beautiful daughter. Okay, now let's go to the Kit Kat. That turned out pretty cute. What do you think? Like it. Okay, let's make the kitty. Okay, the pink pig. And let's do a lot. Let's do a calico. Oh, do we even have an orange calico? Okay, yeah, we do. We can do an orange and tabby calico. Because I want to make this colorful as much as I can. So, let's get some, let me get some water in the barrel. Squeeze, you just squeeze it and the water releases. And we'll make it an orange, it's not a calico, uh, what do you call that? 
orange color cat. That's orange. It looked way too. This is way too orangey for me. But I'm gonna start off with this color. Then I'm gonna lighten it up. And then I'm gonna make his little stripes a different color. Yeah. What do you call this color cat? I'm trying to think of. And I know that his belly is a lot. Yeah, I like this lighter color orange better, but I need to add some brown into this. And uh, it's like, oh, what's that cartoon character? Of that cat that eats his pasta all the time, the spaghetti. He's got, they've got a comic strip on him. They made a movie about him. Oh, what kind of color cat? It's not Tabby. There's an actual name. Well, every time I would go to a farm at a friend's house or a relative, and, you know, it's a farm. So the farm animals are all, or most of the farm animals are running loose in their pens or in their fenced-in areas. And every time we went to anyone's house, we, I always saw this yellow, orangey cat. You know, we see a couple of the other colors, but we always saw at every farm this orange cat. And every time, every one of the home farm, farmers, the owners of the house, I would say, oh, it's just a stray. I don't know. All of a sudden, she started to come up, or he would come up, and we started feeding it. And it's a good mouser. We like it for our hay. Because it's a good mouser and for our feet uh, storage area. And I was like, okay. But it's like, every time I think of farm animals, I always think of this color for a cat. I don't think of it as a black and white or, you know, any other color. I always see this color for a cat, farm animal cat. Okay, I like that. Now let's get to... Let me wipe out my brush. Okay, I know there were some browns. I saw browns right here. Here we go. Let's get this color brown. Let's mix this up. Okay, yep, yeah, I like this color. And let's see what we come up with for these little points here. These are supposed to represent the stripes in the kitty cat. But I'm going to go ahead and give them on his ears, even though most animals have pink on the insides. But they all don't. And I'm going to go ahead and go over so he's not so orangey. Because they're not really orangey color. This, I still cannot, for the life of me, think of the name of this cat. Or what breed? What color is this cat? I know there's a name because there's a there's a name to it. I've heard it before. It's gonna drive me bonkers. As soon as I st as soon as I'm done with this video, I'm gonna Google it and say, what color is this cat? I definitely like this color a lot better. Much better. The other one was just a little too orangey for my taste. But this is what's nice about when you're crafting and you're doing paper crafts and you're doing coloring. You get to make it whatever color you want because it's your project. Of course, if you're doing a swap, you have to live within the guidelines. Well, you're supposed to live within the guidelines of the requirements of the swap. Just to make it more friendly for, oh, I forgot, I erased, wiped that off, and I forgot to do the bottom of the balloon. There we go. Now his belly and his nose. And you see, see the pink on his hooves right here is a little bit darker. So I'm going to go back in. Get some pink. And let's smooth that out. 
But see, that's what happens when the, like the water, when it dries, you get to see the actual uh, coloring and see where you've kind of made some mess ups. Or like here, you see this little watermark stain right here? There's where that one color was a little bit heavier than the other one. And then it's just absorbed. So you can go back in with a clean, wet brush and kind of smooth it out. And it evens it out for you. So you don't have these uh, water blotches. I'm not really for sure what they're called. I'm just calling them water blotches just because that's just the first thing that's coming to mind because these are water stains. Okay, now what are we going to do for the belly? You know what, let's add some white. I already cleaned my brush out so I can go ahead. I don't want to contaminate my white. And let's mix it in with this orange. Let's see what color. I think that will work. Oh yeah. See, just added white to this orange mixture that I already had. That'll be the belly. The color to his belly. Okay. I definitely like that. We'll make his little nose the same color. And then I'm going to make the top of his nose black. Let's clean my brush out. Wipe it on my paper towel. Find my black. Here we go. Black is on this one down here. These little things tell you the colors on the end of them so you know what colors you're looking at. And it says the black is up there on top. gonna dab that with the black and there is the black little snout well actually the pig's got the snout the kitty cat's just a black nose okay so I am done with the watercolor close up my pins water brushes And this is another set. They come in three, and they have the three different tips also. So put that away. Put this away. And see, it all slides right there together. Oh, let me get my whitey wipe out. My wipey. And let's just go ahead and. Clean that up. My o I have OCD pretty <laughs> kind of bad. Not bad, bad, but kind of bad. And I can't handle all this yucky stuff. I gotta clean it up. <laughs> so <laughs> a lot of times that's good, and a lot of times it's bad. And then you just slide everything back. Oh, I forgot that was the water brush that went with this. This came with the kit. The water, you get the water brush, the stand. I don't know what this sponge is for. I'll have to find out somewhere. I'll see if I can get on their website. and Because there's no instructions or nothing. This is the way it came. So. And it all will just dry naturally. And easy to transport. Okay. So that worked out cute. And this. Go right in here. I do like that, but I don't like that part here. So it looks like a mess. I forgot a spot. So let me get some uh, ink. Oh yeah, much better. Because they are gonna see the edges. So I want them to have be some color on the edges because that's one thing they are going to see. Oops, I almost forgot to dab. 
I don't want to have a splotch mark because that's on the edge where people are going to see. Dab, dab, dab. Okay, yeah. Definitely like that a lot better. Okay. So, that worked out there. Let me... I'll just use this clean cloth. And the ink is cleaned. I got this little holder for these Becca brushes, which turns out great. So it holds all, I think there's 16. Let's see how many brushes are there. One. They're all different sizes. I'm sure most of you have seen these. That stuff. But they all, the holder doesn't actually, it said it's made for makeup brushes, but there isn't, like, there really isn't a holder. There's one of these uh, Velcro holders, elastic, elastic holders for each brush. But there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I thought there were ten. Okay, now I'm, I'm curious. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah, there is. I have one hidden here. Ten. And just for convenience, I put the big ones in the center just to make it easier to transport. Because, I, like I said in the beginning, I do take all this to crops. So I'm all set and ready to go. And what's nice about it is it just sits like that. Right, but I lay mine in my bag, in my little case here. Then this folds flat back. And this makes your little stand, and you can just get your brushes out as you need it. So there's that. Now, I'm not going to pop this up because it's already got the little ridges. So I'm just going to use my ATG gun. And because it has ridges, I'm going to put a lot of glue on this card front just because I don't want to make sure because of all the ridges I want to make sure it sticks pretty good okay um, my OCD kicks in and I have to get rid of all these little uh, glue stuff <laughs> the excess glue all this little flyaways Ah, uh, see, I have that on there. Take that off. Line it up. And there's my card front. Turned out pretty cute. Now for the inside of the card. This is where I'm going to do the little grass, but I'm going to do it in layers. I'll give them a little hill, and then I'll just cut what I don't need. Okay. Yeah, I definitely like that. So let's move this down. Yeah, I did this on the... I just put all my scraps in a bin, in a container here. I use those uh, hanging file folders for my scraps. And then that's what I use. So let me line this up. Kind of like... I do like that look of the green. So... What I like to do, just use my stylus, and that'll tell me where I need to cut. And then I'll just trim. Oh, I didn't do that dark enough. Oh, I think I did the whole thing. Yep. 
I didn't do that one. So let's just use the edge of this because that works out good. And then we'll do the edge of this one. And then this one should have an edge mark. Yep, there's the stylus marking. So this will go here. This is going to go on the bottom. Okay, no, don't want to. I think I may have cut too, too close to the edge on that one. So, there, got it, and then this one, and I do need to cut an edge off of here, okay, oh, I don't want to do this yet, because that's the grass, but I do want to use I found these cute little stamps, aren't they cute? These are the little chicky and the little cows. And I'm gonna write a little message on there. So this is going to go on the bottom. Oh, and I do need to get my... I need some more ink. Versifying stamp pad back out my stamp apparatus. And I want to make sure this is done right. So this is part. <laughs> Let's get confused on this thing. Okay, here's the front. So this is where I want my little critters to go to. So there's where that's gonna go. I'll get my little binder out. It's gonna get flushed against that. Yep, there we go. That's gonna be the front. Yep, that's the front against there. Actually, I'm going to do it this way. So, let's get our stamps. And I'm also going to watercolor these stamps, too. We'll do the little horse. Oh, I need to get my grass. So it's going to be here, and here, and here. So there's the grass. This is going to go down. This is going to go down on the grass there. And the horse is going to go, let's do him right here. So I do need to lay my grass down first. I think I do have to. But let's draw the little horse. Let's 
do the little cow. And see that balloon was a pig and that one's cute. Yep, I'm gonna have to go ahead and lay glue these down. So let's take this off. Let me lay this down. Put that to the side. I'm not gonna glue the top of the grass down because I may wanna I may want to do the horse on a um, I don't know if I want to make him into a die cut and an insert him. I kind of wanted him to be flat on the picture on the card for the picture, excuse me. Okay, yep. Let's do it this way. I'm not going to tap this down in case I have to move it. This is going to be easy to move. Oop, my little mouse is coming. Ever so often, I don't know why, it's usually when it's running low on... Oh, yep, my tape runner is almost running low. When it gets running low, that's when I know it's almost time to change it. it the little mouse comes out and it starts to squeak when I roll it. But I've never heard anybody else's do that. Just mine. Oops. Don't. Nope. See if you just barely tap it on there before you set it. I need to get this edge here more than I do the center. Okay, I like that. Okay, now I can press down because I do like that look. And, yep, it closes fine. And then I'll just cut trim off this excess when I'm totally done. Okay, so let's put him back. He doesn't move on us. We'll put the little cow grazing right here. I'm going to have to make that into a die cut because I'm going to be able to see all the colors of the cow. And I'm actually going to do make it look like this one, brown and white. I think that's going to be cute. And do the same thing. So I'm going to make these into die cuts. I'm not going to... stick them on there. So I'm going to go back to my media mat paper. There's my magnet. And since I'm going to have to fussy cut these, I'm not too worried about their positioning. Because I'm going to have to fussy cut. I'm going to stamp them, color them, then I'm going to fussy cut. Oh, i got to do my little chicky. Because the other cat was a cat. We gotta put him somewhere. Let's put the little chick somewhere. And the duck. Okay. Now let's close this up. Turn this over. And let's stamp away. So I'm going to ink these up, and then I'm going to color them with the watercolor, and then I'm going to fussy cut. So we can they're going to be made into die cuts to add to the card. Oops. 
these magnets are hard. The ducky didn't get inked very dark, and I want all of these to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to stamp it again. Here again, don't with the cling stamps, you don't need to put a whole lot of pressure on them. But you notice that the little tail's not as dark as it should be, so one more time. And with practice you'll know where you need to add pressure so the ink touches the paper because you want the ink to touch the paper you don't want it to get all if you squeeze it too much it's kind of like feather and it'll spread out a little bit and you won't like that look of the ink and a lot of times when you're next to the magnet because of the depth you have to press a little bit harder in that area because that depth of the magnet see the depth of the magnet is keeping you from adding that pressure so it's not touching the ink. The ink is not touching the paper as easily. And I don't like that. So I'm going to do that one more time. Oh, much better. Much better. But I definitely want the cow, the cow to be a little bit bolder. I want more of a crisp look for the cow. Oh yeah, much better. Okay, I'm happy with that. Get my wipey. Do a quick little wipe through. Put this over to the side. I'll clean all this later. Close this back up. Close my pad. Okay, let me get back to my watercolors. And let me open these up. I'm going to move this out of my way. Put this over here. Okay, I'll move my ATG adhesive gun. Get out my water brush. Oh, I don't know why I got it out. Didn't even use it because I didn't fill it up with water. Okay, so let's do some coloring. Let's go ahead and start with the little ducky first. I'm going to get my fine tip. I like this one a little bit better than the bolder one. I'm also working with smaller cuts, so let's do the yellow, and we'll do the ducky, this is really smooth and easy. I'm very pleased with the set of watercolors that I purchased. This is a different shade of yellow. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so that takes care of that. Wipe off my brush. Let's do a little bit of orange for his feet. I'm going to do a little bit of this dark orange. Use my palette. And I'm going to use a little bit. Oops. Use the yellow. 
mix it up so it's not so orangey orangey and let's see what I come up with but the bad part is I got the big bristles that's what these uh, the big bristles are good if you're doing an entire page but when you're doing something intricate like this you want to use the fine tip brush but I didn't want to make his feet really really orangey that's why I went with this look. But I am going to make the beak more orangey. I'm going to mix it in with a little bit of this yellow so it's not so orangey for his beak. And this is the finer tip bristles. Yep, see that? I like that a lot better. I think that works a little bit better. Yep, 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 works a lot better. The tools you use make your job easier. If you use the correct tools, and the only way you'll know is to experiment. And if you're possible, what I like to do is if I'm, especially if I'm in a crop, because you just you get all different types of people, you become friends with these people, which is really nice. And almost every one of them lets you share. I know I share my toys. Um, before I get away, I'm going to go ahead and use the same orange for the little cheeky feet. From, from memory, from my uh, daughter's dad, they, her, his parents lived on a farm. And I never noticed the chicks that had orange feet. I know you see that in a lot of cartoons and cards. But they're more of a cream color. But I'm going to do this a little bit more realistic. And on the beak for the chicken, the little chick, let's go ahead and go with a little bit more orange. And let's see what we come up with. And I'm just dotting. I'm not, I'm not moving my brush to my basically just dotting the paper of where the color should go. Yep. A little bit more orange. Yep. I think that's a little bit more realistic. And since it's got the little feathers, I'm assuming this is supposed to be a rooster. <laughs> I don't really think so, but we're. I'm gonna just go with the flow, and I love. Uh, let's see, what is this little card? I'm gonna see what this card looks like. How did they make it? Yeah, see, they did give him a red. They made this red. So where's the red? Okay, so this one's more of a red. That's the pink. That's more pinky. This is more red, I think. Yep. Gonna mix it up with this color. We'll mix it up with this color. And that'll make it more red. And again, I'm just putting little dots, just barely tapping the paper to give it the red and then the little, um, which, oh, the gobbler. That's what you call the little red thing, but I don't know if roosters have that or not, but I'm going with the picture. Basically, I'm just following the picture. <laughs> it's like, it's been so long since I've been around little animals. And since we don't have any little kids, we're empty nesters. We don't have to do a lot of reading and keeping up with books for these little animals because we just don't have to. We're not around any little ones. They, our kids live in another state. Well, actually, we only have one daughter, but she has two children and one grandchild, which is our great grandson. Okay. I like that brown and that'll be the body the head 
with a little chick, rooster, whatever, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what do you call it? It's just, but it's a barn animal. Definitely a barn animal. But I'm not exactly for sure what color. What do you call this? And we're going to leave his little body white. And that'll work. And then let me just get some more brown. And we're going to make the cow. That cow has a brown head. It's a, a Jersey cow. I think that's what you call those that are brown and white. That's a Jersey cow. I think that's what you call them. I think I'm definitely going to Google that for my curiosity's sake afterwards. Is what kind of cow is this? And then just do one of his little brown spots. Get some more ink. Okay. Yep. Get more ink here. Oh, you know what I just noticed on the uh, the pig? What it probably has black hoofs. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it as pink for now because I've already done it. Because <laughs> I just noticed on this cow, the cow and the horse, their, their hoofs are black. Okay, that'll work. We're good. But that'll be fine. Now let me get some of this dark brown. Mix this up. And we'll color the horse's hair, his tail, this dark brown. Because again, like I said, I'm not too familiar. So I'm just going to color the ex exactly like the package is. I know that's cheating. It is and it isn't cheating because I'm supposed to be using my imagination. But <laughs> I don't remember. I should have done some more research before I started this project of what these critters can look like in real life. But I know I have seen the brown horse. And... Uh, my daughter used to ride a, a brown Shetland, and then they also had a, an Arabian, which is kind of a white with speckled, speckled, dark black speckles on it, really light, more gray than black. And I used to ride her, they called her a Pasha, and she was really gentle, very, very gentle. That was the horse that I rode. Okay, so now let's go with the lighter brown. Okay. Oh, yep. Yeah. That's coming too. It's coming together. This is when you want the bigger, br bigger bristle brush. Um, this big, those large pieces, because it makes your job of painting so much smoother. Also, if the way you rot rotate your uh, bristles, like up or down, you kind of want it to make it look like it's got really ho the horse hair. So you want to make it as much realistic as you can. more color. Let me dab that in. Put more color in there. And since I'm working on my media mat, I'm not worried about underneath. Because I have a glass craft table. And 
then I have this plastic, it's like a, a huge placemat that we got from Ikea many years ago. This is what I used to use when I worked on my kitchen table to protect my table with whatever medium I was using. So I didn't have to worry about staining. We have a, uh, an old wood table and I want to protect it as much as possible. So, But that was the only thing that I had at the time to work with because I didn't have a craft table. Okay, let's do the little ears. Get some more ink. I like my little uh, clear. It's a, it's a clear frosty plastic mat, but I like it because it's cushy. So when I'm working on it, especially like if I'm stamping, it gives me a little bit of extra foundation, and it's smoother. And number two, which is the big best thing for me, it's easy cleanup. So if I overspill in paint or glue or anything like that, I just wipe it clean, which really works out great for me. I am not domesticated. Well, I used to be, but I'm not anymore. <laughs> I guess you get to be that way when you become empty nesters. I mean, I, of course I've cleaned because i got my chores. My husband has his chores, so we share the chores. But I want to give a little bit of shading because make it look like it's got some shading out there. Oh, I almost went off the line, but that's okay because I'm going to fussy cut this, so I'm good to go with that. So I'm fine with that. Clean up my brush, and I saw a little mess up right here where I need to go back. I'm going to go right on the line of where the ink was at. I don't want to see any white where I did not ink. And I'm going to put some little streaks to make it look like horse hair. And then once it dries, do a little bit of white. A little bit of brown and that's going to be the inside of the ears there that one's done oh, I gotta get a little bit of pink for the nose and the udders of the cow but I don't want to make it too pinky so I'm going to add some, clean out my brush, wipe it down, get some white. I can already tell I'm going to need some more white. There's not, I think they should have put two things of white in this palette. Looks like there would have been room for it. Let's see what this uh, pink, oh yeah. See how it's not very pink, pink, pink? And that's what I want for the udders. And I'm going to add a little bit of brown to go with the pink for the horns. Because I don't want pink horns, but then I don't want them to be really brown either. Oh, I forgot. I need to do the snout of the cow. Okay, yep. Not overly pink. A little too pink for my taste, but I'm gonna add a little brown to it. Clean up my brush. Add some brown. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, much better. I want to make it a little bit more realistic. I've never noticed a cow have that pink. And then I'm going to get my towel, soak up some of the water. And I'm just dabbing it to soak up some of the water. And then go back. There. Much more happier. Okay, now I'm going to clean my brush. Let's get the black. Okay, the black is down here, the very bottom. And we'll color the hoofs. These little hoofs are kind of hard to do. They're so tiny. And I want to stay in the lines. I definitely need to get a more finer tip brush, which I have some right here, but for now this is going to work. But I definitely need to get some more minor tip brushes. I need to go on my, I have a set of brushes that I haven't opened. <laughs> I've had over 10 years but I haven't used them. Because like I said in the beginning there earlier, I wanted to, I've been wanting to do more watercolor and learn to do watercolor. So I've bought the supplies here and there but I just have never done anything with it. Okay, that works and I'm good. Brush is clean. Close it up. Close this up. Oh, I think that one's dirty. Yep, that was dirty. See, now it's clean. Close this up. I'll put that away in a minute. And now I get the fantastic job of fussy cutting these because these set of stamps did not come with any dies. So I'm just going to fussy cut them out myself. But look, they turned out pretty cute and they're... <laughs> I sh if I say so myself, they match pretty good with the original. <laughs> I copy pretty darn good. I'm not going to get exactly technical in my fussy cutting. And I, I have learned throughout the years, you can just take baby inches, inches, steps, and move the paper as you're cutting. Because I want to cut these right on the edge of the black line of where I stamped everything. Of course, you're not going to get exact especially on these fine details because these are such tiny little stamps but you can get as close as you can you know do the best you can and I, I just don't want to leave any white spots but I just noticed that I'm going to add I'm going to get my white gel marker and get some pupils because all critters have a pupil. At least, I think. I don't know. I'm thinking. It's just a solid black eye. Doesn't look too good for me. I want to give it a little bit of a pupil. Or at least a little bit of a shimmer from the sun. And 
fussy cutting, fussy cutting, fussy cutting, fussy cutting. And again, you just move the paper more than you move the scissors. And you get a little bit better cut. I'm not going to wor worry about in between the feet because I'm not going to be able to get that. And I'm not going to worry about using my X-Acto knife, and I could. But I'm not going to worry about it. You know, that's just, that's being a little too picky. And this is such a fine, this is too small of a project. And there's the little chicky. Only, let me get my white gel pen. Give it a little eye. <laughs> a lot better. Do the same thing for the cow. It's just a little bit of white dot. That's all it is. Just to give it a little bit of an accent. Let me do my little duck. Because if you see, it's just ever so slight. Okay, I'm finishing up the farm greeting card. And I'm going to be putting these little critters on these wobbles. And you can get them in two different sizes. Here is one size, the small, and then here's the larger size for bigger projects. Um, I think almost all the box stores sell them. Oops, before I do that, let me make sure it fits on here. Yep, okay. And then you take the double the adhesive backing off. Make sure I don't put it too close to the fold because I want it to close. And then we'll do the same thing. I know one side is different one other one, but I'm not for sure which is the back, which is the front. The packaging didn't say. But I don't really think it matters. Oop, this one's going to be a little too big, so I'm going to have to trim it off. Let me get my yucky scissors that are made for stuff like this. And since it's plastic, it shouldn't be a problem in cutting it off. I should have left that back in. Let me put that back in back on. Just so I don't lose any of the stick of them. Okay, so I'm just going to trim this plastic because it's too big. It's thin, it's thin plastic, so it's easy, it's really easy to cut. Okay, now let me trim this one. Don't want to get too close to the edge. I want to make sure there's still some backing. Ooh, this part's a little harder. Well, this this must be the backing part because it's a lot tougher to cut. You know, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to use that for the backing. stuff. For some reason, 
Now that I put it back on, it doesn't want to stick. I'm going to put a little glue on here just to be on the safe side because I do want to make sure that it sticks because I could feel the glue's not near as strong as it was. I guess I never should have done taken it off and put it back on. <gasps> Live and learn, now we know. Okay, so let me take the backing off of this before we go any further. So I know I make sure that it sticks. And as you can see, it's a clear plastic. That's and it's so much thinner than the backing. That's why it was easy to cut. So you're just trying to center this as much as possible. Okay, now let's stick the little cow. I want to get him centered here so when he closes, I'm going to close up my glue bottle. Don't want that to dry up. Okay, and there's the finished project. So here's the card. I'm going to watercolor the critters the little pig, the cat, the chicken. The duck and I embossed the back card front with this wood embossing folder and you open it up and I went ahead and colored the inside I just like that look of the wood I wanted to leave that on there and here's the horse saying nay and the cow saying moo happy birthday you party animal and you get to wobble it see that they're gonna be wobble cards this is for a swap, so it's up to the recipient to do what they want with it. And I'm not going to put my name or anything because I don't like to do that. But, oh, I just noticed I forgot to trim off this edge of the grass, which I said earlier I was going to be doing needing to do. But let me get closer. Got it. Okay, so now there we go. There again. There's the finished project. Sorry about that streak there on my camera. There's the front. Open it up and it wobbles. So this would be a cute for a little kid or yeah, for a grown up. Uh, grown ups would enjoy that too. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Take care.